Well, it's no secret that two of the best investors to have ever lived are Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. But it's also no secret that both Warren and Charlie are getting pretty old at this point. And uh, Warren Buffett is well on his way to meeting a goal that he's joked about several times of being the oldest corpse that anyone has ever seen. And uh, I think one of the questions that a lot of people tend to have when they look at a company like Berkshire Hathaway is what is likely to happen with the business after Warren and Charlie are no longer at the helm. And although we don't know whether the management changes at Berkshire Hathaway will take place tomorrow or in five years or in 10 years, and I'm crossing my fingers that that change is as far into the future as possible and Warren and Charlie can keep doing their thing at Berkshire Hathaway for a long time yet, uh, we do have some clues around what is likely to happen with some of the different segments of Berkshire. Uh, a lot of people will know that Warren Buffett runs the stock portfolio, for example, and is the CEO and chairman of Berkshire. But who are the key people that will be involved in running these subsidiary businesses and all of the other aspects of Berkshire Hathaway moving forward? Well, in this video, I want to give you my two cents on that topic and uh, highlight some of the key people that I think are likely to take over in key management roles at Berkshire moving forward. But before we get into that, we do have a sponsor for today's video, and this video is sponsored by Hatch. Hatch is the platform that I personally use for all of my US investing for me as a Kiwi based here in New Zealand. And in 2022, Hatch is asking you to think about what your big and small tomorrow goals look like. For me, the goal has always been financial freedom, putting a little bit away today with the aim being that I can do the things that I want to do tomorrow. Everyone's tomorrow looks different, whether you want to buy your first home, travel the world or become financially independent. Reaching your goals starts by taking the first step. That's why I invest with Hatch to help make my plans a reality. If you want to get started investing with Hatch, check out the first link in the description where you can get a free 20 New Zealand dollar top up when you make your first deposit of 100 New Zealand dollars or more before the 30th of June 2022. Okay, and for this video, let's throw on the NetJets hat, of course, one of the great subsidiaries of Berkshire, and uh, get into talking through some of these different key management positions and what changes we might be able to expect in the next few years. Okay, and let's start right from the top with the CEO position at Berkshire. Now, uh, Warren Buffett actually occupies both the CEO and chairman position at Berkshire today. And uh, the CEO position has been kind of widely rumored uh, that it could be one of basically two people at Berkshire. And those two people are Ajit Jain, who currently is heavily involved in many of the Berkshire insurance businesses, and Greg Abel, who is heavily involved in Berkshire Hathaway Energy, as well as some of the other sort of non-insurance subsidiaries. Now, uh, fortunately for us, we got some information on that at last year's 2021 Berkshire Annual Meeting, where Charlie Munger said this. Well, but that's <laughs> absolutely true, but I would say this, decentralization won't work unless you have the right kind of culture accompanying it. Yeah, but we do. Yeah, we do, but, and but Greg it's dependent is, on it. And I mean, Greg, will, Greg, Greg will keep the culture. Now, following that slight slip up from Charlie Munger, uh, Berkshire put out a press release uh, basically confirming that if uh, Warren Buffett were to pass away or have to step down for Berkshire at that time, Greg Abel would be the one that would take over as CEO of Berkshire Hathaway from Warren Buffett. And they actually went as far as to say if, uh, God forbid, something were to happen to Greg as well, then Ajit Jain would be sort of the next in line as CEO at Berkshire. Now, of course, the CEO position is an extremely key role at any company, and Berkshire is no exception to that. But Berkshire Hathaway does run a incredibly decentralized management system where they have um, basically a headquarters of about 30 people currently based in Omaha, Nebraska, and they have hundreds of thousands of employees across a range of companies. Now, it's also quite important to understand who is likely to be running uh, some of those bigger companies, those bigger subsidiaries once Warren is no longer at the house and it's also important to understand who's running the stock portfolio. So I'm going to sort of break Berkshire down into the four giants and this is exactly how Warren Buffett described Berkshire in his uh, most recent shareholder letter uh, that came out at the start of 2022. He basically described uh, you know, what shareholders own at Berkshire as four giants that make up kind of the bulk of uh, the Berkshire business. And basically those four giants are the insurance businesses, their huge investment in Apple, uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, which is the Berkshire-owned railroad, and of course Berkshire Hathaway Energy. 
Now starting with insurance, the current Vice Chairman of Insurance Operations is Ajit Jain. And Ajit Jain has had a long and successful track record at Berkshire over uh, multiple decades at this point. And uh, he himself is getting a little older, but we'll assume that uh, hopefully Ajit's got a few years left in him yet. And uh, he is the most likely candidate to basically just continue running the operations of the insurance subsidiaries at Berkshire. So he's kind of going to be the key player there. The second one who is also quite important, I would say, is actually Todd Combs. Now, some of you may be familiar with the name Todd Combs because he is one of uh, the guys in the office, as Buffett often refers to them as, uh, who runs um, part of about a $30 billion portion of the stock market portfolio with Ted Weschler, the other guy in the office. Now, uh, Todd Combs actually uh, a little while back was appointed the CEO of Geico, of course, um, one of Berkshire's very large insurance operations specializing in auto insurance. So in my view, uh, Ajit will continue to kind of run the show as part of the insurance operations, but if something were to happen with Ajit, Todd Combs does seem like a fairly likely candidate to move into Ajit's role. Now I of course could be wrong on that and potentially there's someone in Ajit Jain's uh, team that he works with you know, frequently that could step up into that role, but Todd Combs seems like a likely candidate, at least out of the people that uh, Buffett has made us most familiar with over time at Berkshire. Now the next of the big four giants is Apple and this is a fairly straightforward one in terms of management because uh, Apple is of course a public company and although Berkshire owns a 5% or so ownership position in Apple um, that they bought in the open market, uh, they don't really have too much influence on what the management direction will likely be at Apple. So of course, uh, Tim Cook is currently the CEO. He actually attended this year's Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting. And, uh, you know, Apple will have their own succession plans in place for when uh, Tim Cook presumably moves on at, at some point. Now the third of the big four giants is of course Burlington Northern Santa Fe, Berkshire's big railroad business. And uh, again, I think we're unlikely to see many major changes here when Warren and Charlie are no longer at the helm at Berkshire. Uh, this is going to be a common theme through a lot of these subsidiaries, I would suggest. And uh, the current CEO, and actually relatively new CEO at Burlington Northern Santa Fe, is Catherine Farmer, who took over in 2021. Uh, Catherine Farmer is in her early 50s, which I would suggest by Berkshire Hathaway standards is um, very, very young. You know, we've got... Uh, Warren and Charlie in the 90s, we've got Ajit in his 70s, uh, I think Greg also in his 50s, so I uh, expect Catherine Farmer may have a very long runway yet at Berkshire, and I can't see you know Warren or Charlie moving on from Berkshire having any real influence on the management at Burlington Northern Santa Fe. And the fourth and final giant at Berkshire is of course Berkshire Hathaway Energy. Now uh, there are two kind of key people here and it will be interesting to see what happens as uh, the roles kind of change a little bit over time. So currently the chair of Berkshire Hathaway Energy is of course Greg Abel. Uh, Greg being you know next in line to be the CEO at Berkshire and presumably as he moves into that position of you know CEO of the overall Berkshire Hathaway company uh, he will have a little less to do with the day-to-day -day operations of Berkshire Hathaway Energy. Now the executive who's currently the CEO and president of Berkshire Hathaway Energy is a man by the name of William Furman uh, and he's actually been at Berkshire Hathaway Energy since 2006 so I expect that he will kind of continue on running a lot of the day-to-day -day operations of Berkshire Hathaway Energy as Greg Abel moves into the CEO position. And finally, uh, a long list of other subsidiaries, of course, live within Berkshire, including uh, NetJets. And I expect that, again, we'll see a similar theme to what we've seen at the likes of Burlington Northern Santa Fe, where Warren Buffett really has very, very little to do with the day-to-day -day operations of the business. He basically, when he acquires a company, he says, you guys can continue to lead your own lives. We're going to leave the current management team in place. Uh, you know, I've bought this business because it's earned consistently high returns on equity and it's grown or whatever the case might be. Um, so he likes to make very, very few changes there. And he basically says, you know, send the cash to Omaha and he will allocate it where he sees fit. So I think we're unlikely to see uh, any significant changes in a lot of the other subsidiaries uh, just because Warren and Charlie are no longer at Berkshire but it is worth noting that the current vice chairman of non-insurance operations 
also happens to be Greg Abel. So it'll be interesting to see whether he retains that role as he moves into the CEO position at some point in the future. Now where I think things get really interesting and I think we will potentially see the most significant uh, changes after Buffett is no longer at the helm are uh, in the area that I sort of generally would refer to as capital allocation. Now the reason that Berkshire Hathaway has been so successful over time and that they've grown so much wealth for shareholders over time is basically because of this kind of reinvestment engine that they have. So the businesses that Berkshire owns, you know, send the cash to Omaha, the stocks that Berkshire owns send the dividends to Omaha or occasionally are, are sold and down to produce cash and so on and uh, basically Buffett takes the profits from those businesses or from previous stock investments and reinvests that cash into new opportunities whether it is buying back his own stock whether it's buying a new business whether it's buying a new stock uh, he's sort of uh, weighing up the potential returns he can generate in each of those different areas and he's putting money to work where he thinks it will be you know most beneficial for shareholders of Berkshire over the long term. And Buffett has been reasonably public uh, in the past in saying that his role in terms of capital allocation is likely to be taken over by three or maybe four different managers at Berkshire. And uh, in my mind, we have kind of three very obvious candidates that would fit into that realm of capital allocation. One of them is Greg Abel, of course, who will be the new CEO at Berkshire. And the other two are Todd Combs and Ted Weschler. Todd Combs, I already mentioned, is the current CEO of GEICO, but together uh, Ted and Todd manage about $30 billion of Berkshire's $300 billion or so dollar uh, stock portfolio. Now, uh, interestingly, their compensation arrangement is actually very closely linked together. So their combined performance in terms of the returns they generate from stocks is what actually impacts their compensation at Berkshire. So they work very closely together and um, you know the returns that Todd generates will impact the compensation that Ted gets and, and kind of vice versa, which is an interesting arrangement that Charlie Munger apparently came up with. Uh, and we know a little bit about the backgrounds of Ted and Todd. They've both been at Berkshire for some time now. Uh, Todd Combs used to run a hedge fund called Castle Point Capital. We don't know exactly what his returns were at that hedge fund, but we do know that over about a five year period, his assets under management grew uh, more than tenfold. They grew from about 35 million to about 400 million. I expect that a large proportion of that was, of course, cash inflows, presumably because he was producing good returns, but we don't know exactly what those returns were. Now, uh, Ted Weschler, we do know a little bit more about, and if you're interested in learning more about Ted Weschler, he was actually on the uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart podcast recently, which I would definitely recommend listening to. Uh, Ted shares some of his background, and uh, we can also do a bit of digging on the way that he thinks about investments and some of the returns that he's generated. Now in his fund, which he ran from 2000 to 2011, $1 invested would have turned into about $13. And that of course includes the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis, comes out to about 26% per year compounded, very, very good returns. And uh, he's also made a couple of other interesting investments that have caught headlines uh, before as well. One of them being uh, when the Roth IRA data got leaked for a couple of famous people, including Ted Weschler. We actually found out that Ted had grown his individual retirement account from $70,000 to $264 million over about a 29 year period by my maths, you know, including his fairly modest uh, cash you know, inputs and contributions to that retirement account. I estimate that he probably returned about 32% a year uh, over that 29 year period, which is just astronomical returns. And uh, we also saw a relatively recent investment from uh, Ted Weschler as well, which was his investment in Dillard's made in 2020. There were some SEC filings that he had bought Dillard's personally, presumably it was too small to be done within Berkshire. And uh, that was very quickly a 10 bagger plus some very, very large special dividends. So we know that these three people that will likely be making a lot of these capital allocation decisions at Berkshire, Greg Abel, Todd Combs and Ted Weschler, 
are of course extremely talented in the investment world um, but i would like to sort of break it down into kind of three different categories of capital allocation and give kind of my thoughts on who i think will tend to own each of those areas now the first area we have is just reinvestment into existing subsidiaries existing businesses that berkshire already owns i think that's very likely to be led by greg abel you know, a big shining example of that capital reinvestment is in the business that Greg is currently the chair of, which is Berkshire Hathaway Energy. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energy is a very large and growing utility subsidiary at Berkshire, and uh, it's very unusual in the fact that it's never paid a dividend. Um, you know, utility companies are usually renowned for basically paying out all of their earnings to shareholders, particularly if they're public companies. But Berkshire Hathaway Energy, as it's tucked into the overall kind of Berkshire enterprise, has gone forward with the attitude that, you know, we can generate sufficient returns by reinvesting in our business. And uh, they have grown the Berkshire Hathaway Energy pie massively over time. And I think for that reason, it really makes sense for Greg to continue to own a lot of those decisions around reinvesting reinvesting capital into existing businesses. Of course, it will always be stacked up against different investment alternatives like buying back stock or acquiring new businesses. But I think Greg is very likely to take the lead in that department. Now, next on the list of sort of investment opportunities that generally tend to happen at Berkshire, we have acquiring new businesses. And uh, this again is of course led by Buffett, but there's, uh, from what I can tell, kind of a range of people that get pulled into some of these decisions, depending on what type of business they're looking to acquire. So Berkshire recently, for example, acquired Allegheny Corp. That was a company that uh, Buffett had followed for 60 years or something insane. Uh, so that, of course, is an investment decision largely uh, led by Buffett, but presumably in consultation with someone like a Jet Jane around how Allegheny's insurance business would fit in with the existing Berkshire insurance businesses. And again, I think the process will look largely the same moving forward, just with um, you know slightly different people. So I expect the relevant sort of um, managers of existing businesses to be involved if they're buying a similar type of business. And then I expect probably Ted, Todd and Greg to all work very closely together on that. We already know that uh, Ted has helped out with some smaller acquisitions at Berkshire. Um, Buffett has mentioned that in previous annual meetings and so on. And Ted has actually sort of mentioned that in passing a couple of times on the very small number of interviews that he's done as well. So I expect that's probably the case with new businesses. And uh, the stock portfolio, I think the, again, obvious candidates are Ted and Todd. They currently manage about 10% of the stock portfolio of Berkshire, and I expect that that will grow significantly in terms of the assets that, that they will manage once Warren and Charlie are no longer there. And I'd be surprised if those assets under management that they control didn't grow substantially before Buffett and Munger moved on. So there you have it. That is my two cents and me kind of gazing into my crystal ball a little bit and uh, speculating on what future management may look like at Berkshire. Uh, and a lot of these areas have been given significant clues by Warren and by Charlie. And uh, sure, there's still some unknowns and the timeline, of course, is unknown. But I think it's likely that Berkshire's probably in pretty safe hands moving forward. And um, hopefully, you know, this wonderful art piece that Warren and Charlie have gotten to build throughout their careers continues to grow and do do very very well uh, long after they had gone so I do hope you enjoyed the video if you did be sure to hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here but that's it for me for this one and I'll see you in the next video cheers